The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could brighten them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what had been seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, the day we've been waiting for is finally here. We've been moving towards it for weeks. The anticipation is palpable, the hype over the top. You know what I'm talking about, right? Some know it as Super Bowl Sunday, and it is. But I'm talking about Transfiguration Sunday. <laughs> when Jesus is transfigured, transformed right in front of his disciples on a mountaintop. He sparkles, his clothes dazzle. The disciples are transfixed by his divinity shining forth, and they are inspired to make some changes. Now, the way that the NFL marks time is through a season that leads to this Sunday of all Sundays, the Super Bowl. And the way that we in the church mark time is also experienced through long, whole seasons, known as the liturgical calendar. Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent. And right now, on this day, it's our halftime show. Because we are exactly halfway between the glorias of Christmas and the alleluias of Easter. And this event on the mountaintop is also the halfway point in Jesus' ministry between his baptism and his resurrection. Right in the middle of his earthly ministry comes this trek up the mountain with Peter and James and John and a multitude of mountaintop, the ultimate in mountaintop experiences. Jesus is transfigured to dazzling white, and Moses and Elijah, the two greatest prophets of all time, suddenly appear. And a voice comes from a cloud saying, This is my son, the beloved one. Listen to him. Halfway. We all know the importance of halfway points, especially in any kind of significant endeavor. Halfway through, the point when we need the most encouragement, that point where we wonder if we can complete the journey. Maybe it's that spot where we stop and take a deep breath in order to persevere. It's when the novelty of a new beginning has worn off and the exhilaration of a destination reached seems a long way off. Halfway. And then as quickly as it started, it was over. They came down off the mountain, back to the other disciples, back to the towns and villages, back to the crowds, back to work, back to the same old, same old. But things were fundamentally different. Bishop Yehale Curry from the Metro Chicago Synod in a Transfiguration sermon a year ago asked, what if Jesus' face was always shining? What if his clothes were always sparkling? What if God had always been talking from the mountain? What if mountaintop experiences allow us to see our neighbors, the world, and ourselves as we really are. And then he said, we would see ourselves 
as change agents. We'd see our neighbors dazzling. We'd see the church as powerful. Yes, he said, I'm suggesting to you that it wasn't Jesus, that Jesus didn't change. The disciples did. And if the disciples were changed, surely so are we. We are changed every time we pray. Changed every time we open up the scripture. We are transfigured every time we fellowship with our neighbors. Every time we respond to ministry needs. Every time that we expand our definition of family. Every time that we let our light shine at school. Every time that we remember at work that we are the salt of the earth. Every time that we realize that the least of these... Jesus called them blessed. Yes, we are changed by the transforming love and power of God who meets us daily in the valleys of our lives, not just in the mountaintop experiences. Yes, mountains are where we get our inspiration, but valleys are where we live and serve. As we celebrate this year 150 years of ministry, we take stock of what we've done together and we ask one another who we can be, who we can be in this community, in the neighborhoods of Lakeview and South Loop and wherever it is that we live. And we are transformed when we identify in ourselves and for each other how our passions, energy, and gifts are being called to meet the world's needs. We are transformed when we challenge one another to use our gifts, our money, our resources to heal a hurting world that is broken by poverty and racism and war. It is no accident that we read about Jesus' transfiguration right before Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent. There is a connection between his epiphany, the transfiguration, and what is to follow. In these three days now, in three days, Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of Lent, a time of self-reflection, of simplifying life, and of sharing with others. In these next three days of football and feasting, of Mardi Gras and Fat Tuesday, may we lean into the next season, knowing that our lives are and always will be filled with change, with transitions, with transformations between birth and death and sorrow and celebration. And God tells us, too, that we are beloved. As a faithful mother and tender father, God holds us and bids us to follow the one who was sent to serve and save. The table has been set and the feast is prepared. So may the light of Christ shine through us in our prayers, in our giving, and through acts of mercy and compassion and justice, so that others too may see that we are changed by the glory of God in us. In this meal and in the waters of baptism, we are transformed to live life anew, confident in the one who transforms us from the inside out. Amen.